teenage girl uh, gets on a bus in the winter because that's a warm place. And I'm told that the new bus drivers don't always figure this out. But those bus drivers who've been around a while, they know she's there because this is a warm, safe place for her to be. And they say nothing. Housing stability means workers do better at work. Housing stability makes stronger communities. Housing stability is good and makes good economic sense. Strong return on investment. This investment, this $100 million, is in line with the state's plan to prevent and end homelessness. It has broad support. Um, there's nothing at all controversial about it that I'm aware of. An estimated 14,000 Minnesotans are homeless on each night or being served in homeless programs. We're, we're, gonna, we're on track to be the first state to eliminate homelessness for veterans. We uh, had 50 million in the bill last year and we were going to do another 50 million this year and we said we didn't get that bill last year. The homelessness problem is not going away and so we are asking for 100 million this year. It is unprecedented but it makes good economic sense. They have tracked children who are homeless and by the time those uh, children are in the fifth grade, those who have been homeless or highly mobile, uh, who've not known where they're going to be sleeping at night, they achieve as a second grader would who is in stable housing. Uh, you may have seen a letter from a woman who uh, this winter on, on those cold, cold days found um, a couple in the alley behind her house and they had frostbitten fingers and she did what any uh, compassionate person does. She called an ambulance and the ambulance came and you know what happened. Those two people were taken away to emergency room and of course we cared for them. There's a health care cost because these two people didn't have a warm place to stay, a warm place to live. Um, the state that uh, figured that out is Utah. Now you wouldn't assume that Utah would be the state that says we're going to end homelessness. But they figured out the dollars and cents of this. They figured out if they housed people, that cost to them would be less than the costs that they had when people have no home. They cut homelessness by 78% over the past eight years, and their goal is to end homelessness by 2015. And 80 million, uh, we give to the Minnesota Housing Finance Agency. They came to us a number of years ago and said, we have bonding authority, and our rules are different than the states for general obligation bonding. If you give us the money and we do the bonding, we can partner with, for example, nonprofits. So they can partner with Catholic Charities and Lutheran Social Service and Common Bond and Beacon and many others. And, and that leverages a lot of private money. How do you generally measure success with the highly mobile population? Is it being sheltered for a week, a month? So when we move folks from shelter into an apartment with services, we would like them to stay there as long as they need that housing and those services. And so it's long term. Um, so we'd see it as a failure if it only lasts 30 days. That's what kind of emergency shelter model was for. But I will give you one very specific. And if you uh, drive on 94 between Minneapolis and St. Paul when you're about Hamlin or Lexington, there's a high rise. I believe that's a common bond uh, facility. And then I saw that they built a building out front. And I confess, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a drive through or something. Until the commissioner of MHFA says, no, they built the building there to provide early childhood education right there and after school tutoring. And to your question about outcomes, now 100% of the young people who live in that building graduate from high school. How does the picture look now as opposed to 10 years ago in terms of homelessness in Minnesota? It's gotten worse. Um, uh, double digit increases. We've seen a lack of investment in housing from the federal level, from the state level. You know, the economic crisis was spurred by the housing crisis. Could you speak to um, any, uh, in, in terms of the landscape of Twin Cities versus metro area versus rural area? Yeah. The way we know folks are homeless is we have volunteers go out and find them and count them. And so it's just a lot harder in rural areas. But even with the people we find in rural areas, it's about one third of the homeless population in the state knowing that we miss a lot. What we know is we hear from communities across the state that they need housing stability in those communities. Sometimes people say, 
just move them, you know, people in the city say, just move them to the cities, you know, but what we know is people are generally temporarily homeless, and they, they really need whatever support structures they have, and so if their family lives in Moorhead, you know, we'd like them to stay in Moorhead and find housing that works for them there. Um, so really...